I'm Joe. Today on Next Level Bullshit, we go all tech on you with the new USB standard, USB 3C, and why you should be scared as hell about it. Apple released their new 12-inch Retina MacBook last week that's slimmer and lighter than any model. You remember we talked about Apple a few episodes back. You see, Apple has become the Kim Kardashian of the tech world. If there isn't some agonizingly pointless news, especially gratuitous pictures, about you today, then something is wrong. So now they're shaking things up again, because you need all new connectors for your shit, just like they did with the iPhone 5. The new MacBook's claim to fame is the new 3.1 USB standard Type-C port, which is a multi-use USB port. It recharges batteries, connects to monitors, and delivers data faster than USB 2.0. Even better, the plug is reversible, so you'll never insert a USB cable upside down ever again. That's pretty cool, because everyone knows sometimes it takes three tries to get the USB connector in. But they only stuck one fucking port on the whole computer. If you want more, you have to purchase an $80 dongle. Dude, that's some next level bullshit right there. $80 for a fucking dongle? For the, price of the, uh, for the price of the dongle, you can get a Moto G phone at Verizon. But that's not the bullshit we're here to discuss today. We're here to look at USB security. USB-C is faster and capable of much more but it doesn't appear to be any more secure. Karsten Knoll and Jacob Lell showed the world last year that USB devices can be compromised in a very serious way. You see, the USB controller in everything has a bit of code called firmware. It's a lot like an ultra mini operating system sitting on a small chip in USB devices. The firmware can be easily altered to become malicious due to limited protections against being overwritten. Once reprogrammed, devices can emulate a keyboard and issue commands on behalf of the logged in user. For example, to fuck with files or install malware that can infect the controller chips of other USB devices connected to the computer. It can also spoof a network card and change your computer's DNS settings to redirect traffic to nasty sites with more malware. When it detects the computer is starting up, it can load a small virus, which infects the computer's operating system prior to starting up. The host computer has no choice but to run the firmware, and once infected, it's almost impossible to clean. Simply reinstalling the operating system, the standard response to otherwise eradicable malware, does not address bad USB infections at their root. The USB thumb drive from which the operating system is reinstalled may already be infected, as may the hardwired webcam or other USB components inside the computer. A bad USB device may even have replaced the computer's BIOS, again by emulating a keyboard and unlocking a hidden file on the USB thumb drive. Google has also introduced the USB 3C standard in their Chromebooks, putting it on two of the best-selling laptops out there. I wonder if there's a reason to force the industry to use this new unsecured standard. Who would want unsecured ports on computers? Oh, I know, the same guys who paid 10 million to the makers of encryption software to have unsecured backdoors, the NSA. You see, long before the world was informed of how unsecured USB can be, another organization had already perfected the art of firmware-based backdoors, the NSA. In 2013, Ars Technica reported, the NSA's operators install backdoor hardware and firmware directly onto the systems by interdiction. The systems are diverted during shipments to load stations where their surveillance components are installed. Just in case you missed it, that means the NSA intercepted electronic shipments and installed their surveillance software or devices before the shipments made it to retailers. Advanced Network Technology, a division of the NSA's tailored access operation, has a 50-page product catalog that was uncovered in the latest leaks by Edward Snowden. That's right, a goddamn catalog with fucking prices of the NSA's best surveillance toys and software. One of the products is Cottonmouth, 
For $1,000, you can get 50 units that are a universal serial bus hardware implant, which will provide a wireless bridge into a target network, as well as the ability to load exploit software onto target PCs. It's real world James Bond shit. One of these on your network and the attacker has total wireless control and can load whatever nastiness they want. But what you really want is the new and improved Cottonmouth 2. It's even more sneaky. It's the actual socket rather than the plug, though it'll cost a whole lot more. 50 units go for about 200,000. That's one of the things the NSA installs in those secret tech rooms, sneaks into shipments of parts to manufacturers. You really have to look at this catalog. There's DD Bounce, which they use to infect thousands of Dell PowerEdge servers. This one's free. Another freebie is Iron Chef. It exploits the motherboard BIOS, the software that boots the computer of just about any computer. And you're gonna love JetPlow. It creates a wide open backdoor for Cisco firewalls and loads of others. This is one of our top sellers. But this, this is my favorite, Nightstand. It can wirelessly seize control of nearly any computer, regardless of security precautions, from as far away as eight miles. Contact your NSA rep for prices and availability. Tailored Access Operations, the candy store for high-tech spies. Download the catalog at the link in our ATS thread. Okay, moving on. You'll also have to be very wary of who you give your phone to for repairs. MDSEC reported on March 11th of 2015 of a device known as IP Box. For about $350, you can purchase a device that simulates screen touches to mimic every possible screen lock combination on iPhones in about four days. I know what you're thinking. The phone will release uh, all data or become disabled after 10 failed attempts, right? <laughs> nope. MDSEC says, our initial analysis indicates that the IP box is able to bypass this restriction by connecting directly to the iPhone's power source and aggressively cutting the power after each failed pin attempt, but before the attempt has been synchronized to flash memory. As such, each pin entry takes approximately 40 seconds, meaning that it will take up to 111 hours to brute force a four digit pin. Even though USB 3.1 Type-C is new and great, promising more versatility and convenience than ever before, the firmware is still unprotected and unsecured. It's a recipe for disaster. A disaster we think is no accident. Two solutions have been proposed to increase security of the firmware. Make the firmware only upgradable or changeable if the update has a vendor certificate, meaning that only the vendor can supply the update. Add a button to all USB devices that have to be engaged in order for an update to be processed on the unit. Of course, the exploit for these two safety features will soon be available in your next tailored access operations catalog. Make sure you're on the mailing list. You don't want to miss out. Now that bad USB is out in the wild, we have to be way more careful on how we handle USB devices. Malware detectors cannot detect firmware viruses, so you have to use your best judgment going forward. Now tell us what you think about this bullshit. Is it epic? Is it next level? Or are we just fucked in the head? Use the comments and let us know. And there it is, episode 42. I want to thank everybody out there for continuing to be awesome. Our last episode on the Republican senator's letter to the Iranians got the interwebs streaming. Frank G. Antonio jumped in again and said, well done, and a breath of fresh air as always. I can't wait to see how many knuckleheads call you a liberal so-and-so for daring to wax positives about Obama. Not sure if I was positive about Obama, just not negative, but you fucking nailed it, Frank. Scram F. Jenkins had some fun with the NLBS acronym, New Liberal Ball Sucker. Wow, that's actually pretty original. Robert Sanchez had a little trouble telling us how he really feels. Tehran Tom got a ton of contributions from agents of foreign power to betray his country. He and the rest of the T Publican treason team all took Israel's side against America's. But Tehran Tom, the traitor Todd, got paid nearly a million dollars to do so. Blow Mastifiable said, 
I think these senators had way too much fluoride in their water when they were kids. Yeah, I might agree with you there. So, what's the total today? 13. Nice. Each time we hit 100 in the swear jar, I donate $100 to a worthy charity. This will be the second time 100 is coming up, and we're focused on literacy. Because literacy is the best way to be able to filter bullshit. So far, United Through Reading looks pretty good, but we're still open to suggestions. Now, if you find a story that's bullshit worthy that we can use for this show, post to any social media site using hashtag NLBS. If you're really motivated, make me a video. If we like it, we'll feature you on our next segment. You can also email me anytime at joe at nextlevelbullshit.com. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube, and watch all our shows on nextlevelbullshit.com. And don't forget to go to thenlbs.spreadshirt.com to get shirts and other cool shit. Until next time, in the you can't make this shit up category, officials in Florida, the state most susceptible to the effects of global warming, has banned the words global warming, climate change, and sustainability. Yeah, seriously. Just yesterday, an employee of Florida's Environmental Protection Department was forced to take a leave of absence and seek a mental health evaluation for using the term climate change.